E3 is in full swing and last night Microsoft had their press conference and I think it was pretty good. A lot of people have been saying, myself included, it was do or die for Microsoft at this point. But I think they had a pretty strong conference and they just came at us with games. So without further ado, let's dive into what they had to show us. So first up, Microsoft came out swinging with Halo Infinite. Uh, it, we, to be fair, we didn't see a lot of details on this, but it was a new trailer showing off the new engine that it's going to run on, Flip Space Engine, which, to be fair, looks very powerful. And, you know, with combined with the power of the Xbox One, it looks like this game will probably be, you know, top tier in terms of graphics and gameplay. It's going to be a new adventure with Master Chief. It's not been confirmed yet whether this is Halo 6. It's called Halo Infinite, so presumably not. At the end, we tease, uh, we got a little tease of Master Chief uh, putting that um, drive into the back of his helmet, which could be hinting Cortana might return or a new AI system, who knows. But yeah, this is definitely a big one for Halo fans. The, the Halo series is, you know, known for its quality over the years. And this is definitely a title to look ahead to. Clearly, it's still in the early ages of uh, development, so I wouldn't expect it anytime soon. But here's hoping we see, uh, you know, some gameplay and some more news sooner rather than later. Then we got a brand new trailer for Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And I have to admit, I've not played the first game, Ori in the Blind Forest, but I've heard great things about it. It definitely is one I need to get around to. I just, there's only so much time in the day, you know. But I've heard great things about that, and Will of the Wisps looks like it's going to absolutely follow suit. The trailer looked absolutely gorgeous. You know, the art style totally in line with the first one. And we've got a release date of 2019. Not too specific, but, you know, I doubt this game will be delayed. It was announced at E3 last year, so there's been plenty of work done on it since then. And, yeah, I think this will definitely be another surefire hit for Xbox owners and, you know, Microsoft gamers on PC. So, yeah, I think this was a highlight last year, and I know there are a lot of people looking forward to getting their hands on this one. Then we got an announcement that made me very excited. The proper reveal of Shadows Die Twice, which it turns out is called Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is, this is the new game from from Software, the folks behind the Dark Souls games. And as a big Dark Souls fan, I was really intrigued when this game was announced at the Video Game Awards last year. And it was great to see more of it here. And I was surprised to find that it, clearly it's going to be available on the Xbox. Because I know Dark Souls games have been available on the Xbox. But, you know, from software, they did Bloodborne as well. That was a PS4 exclusive. It was shown at the Video Game Awards. And it wasn't quite clear whether it was exclusive or not. But no, this is going to be multi-platform, which is great. So we saw a, a great looking gameplay trailer. They really came out, you know, no CG bollocks or anything. They just showed us gameplay straight away, and we it appears that we'll play as this protagonist who has a kind of uh, ye olde mechanic arm that can be used in combat and help you traverse the environment as kind of a grappling hook arm. It really reminded me of kind of a mix of Neo and Dark Souls. I mean, obviously the Dark Souls comparison is apt, but Neo with the kind of Japanese setting. Um... I noticed there were what appeared to be stealth mechanics in the video, which were kind of being uh, first for the Dark Souls series. I know this isn't connected to Dark Souls, but for those type of games, uh, you know, you could kind of sneak up on enemies in Dark Souls and backstab them if you're very careful. But in this one, it looks like there are dedicated stealth mechanics. You know, we saw him uh, hunched up against the wall, hiding from enemies. We saw another one where he sneaks up behind and does massive damage. And, yeah, I, I'm all for that. I think it's great that they're, they're innovating there. And it appears there's going to be some kind of uh, death mechanic. The game is called Shadows Die Twice. And at the end of the trailer, we see the protagonist get killed, but then come back. So it seems like there's going to be this kind of mechanic where your death works within the confines of the game. It, it no doubt will affect you somehow, uh, maybe make you weaker or something. But, you know, death will be a part of the game's story. It won't just be a point where you 
restart. So yeah, I'm definitely excited about this and I can't wait to see more of it soon. Next up, Todd Howard from Bethesda came up on stage and firstly he announced that Fallout 4 is available now on Game Pass for those that have that and then he gave us a sneak look at Fallout 76 which was announced about two weeks ago and will serve as a prequel to all other Fallout games. It follows the um, inhabitants of Vault 76 and it seems this is going to be a full-fledged Fallout game. It's four times the size of Fallout 4, so really massive, and will be set in West Virginia. So yeah, this looks like uh, one to really look out for, for Fallout fans, for RPG fans, and no doubt we'll see more of it at Bethesda's conference. The next announcement will no doubt have pleased fans of the episodic series from Square Enix, Life is Strange. I'm kind of surprised this wasn't announced at Square Enix's conference, but there you so it goes. So this appears to be a new episodic series set within the universe of the Life is Strange series called Captain Spirit. And it, the first episode, it seems, I would assume just the first episode, is going to be free on June 26th of this year. And it will follow this young boy who's a bit of an outcast, doesn't get on so well at school, but, you know, clearly has this imagination and this flair for storytelling. And it seems like players are going to, you know, follow him and is kind of going to blur the line between his imagination and his everyday life. And, you know, the Life is Strange series, I think, has been really great. And I feel like Square Enix is giving Telltale a run for their money when it comes to making a great episodic series. And I see no reason why Captain Spirit won't follow suit with that. So, yeah, definitely one to keep an eye out for. Despite the fact that I am a PlayStation guy, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I like Xbox, but I just lean more towards PlayStation personally. Their games appeal more to me. I have to admit that I've never actually played Nier Automata, which was released last year and was incredibly well received. And people have been telling me to play it for ages, and I do want to, but I'm ashamed to say I haven't yet. However, it, that was a PS4 exclusive, now coming to Xbox on the 26th of June, so not long to wait. And it will include all of the DLC released so far. So that's great news for Xbox fans. I really hope they enjoy it. You know, I fucking hate console wars and people that bitch about exclusives going to other platforms. So no no salt from me. Enjoy. Have a great time. And I, I hope to play it soon. Crackdown 3 was next up. Now this game was announced years ago now. And it's just had delay after delay after delay. Unfortunately, it looks like a very interesting game. It looks great, the amount of destruction in it. But unfortunately, the the complex mechanics behind it is causing it to be difficult to get out on time, it seems. And God bless Ke Terry Crews. He really seems to uh, be holding up the interest in Crackdown just on his own. God bless him for that. You know, I, he seems so pumped for it. He gets me pumped for it when he's in the trailers. He was in the game there. I mean, that was cool. So it's going to be a Game Pass launch title. It, there's all the craziness you'd expect, the crazy weapons, crazy vehicles you can switch up on the fly. Obviously, the destruction is one of the main selling points of it. There's just going to be a ton of that. And, you know, we saw plenty of gameplay of it. It looks crazy. It looks wild. Here's hoping it does not get delayed again. We then got to see another game I'm very interested in, Metro Exodus, which so far is shaping up to look like a really great game. I've enjoyed the past Metro games, and you know I feel like this one is going to be even bigger and even better. So we saw plenty of gameplay, which showed off some of the mechanics. There's going to be gun customization, so you can, you know, alter your loadout on the fly if you want to go in stealthy if you want you know guns blazing you could do that i really felt like there was a wide variety of locations shown off as well that we know that there's going to be a train in this one that you know the characters live on so obviously you'll be traveling across russia and i really liked how you know in the previous games there were it was mostly dark and dingy underground locations and but in this one, you know, you've still got your dark and scary places, but there also seems to be, you know, a lot of um, being outside, a lot of uh, quite kind of beautiful in a destroyed kind of way locations. So I really appreciate that there's going to be, you know, uh, a fresh uh, palette added to it, you know, 
is is going to keep us interested. It won't feel overbearing. The, the monsters are back and they appear to be bigger than ever. Some way bigger than anything we've seen before. So it looks like you better uh, stock up on your ammunition because it's going to take some serious firepower to take some of those monsters down. The stealth mechanic appears to be present still. There, there was uh, optional stealth in the previous games, and it looks like that's going to be back for this one. Which is someone who enjoys being stealthy in my games. Um, I really enjoy that, so I hope that's as fleshed out as, uh, or even more fleshed out than previous games. And we're not going to have to wait too long for this. February twenty second, twenty nineteen. So mark your calendars. I know this was shown off uh, during Microsoft's conference, but I believe it's also coming to PC and PS4 as well. Here's an announcement I certainly wasn't expecting. Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming to the Xbox One. Now, for those who don't realise, the Kingdom Hearts games have been uh, very much PlayStation games in the past. There has never been a Kingdom Hearts game on the Xbox, but Kingdom Hearts 3 is indeed coming to Xbox One, and I didn't hear any rumours about this at all. Maybe there were some, but they slipped past me, so this was a big surprise for me. So, basically, for, for any Xbox fans out there who aren't familiar with the Kingdom Hearts series, it's basically um, Final Fantasy mixed with Disney, which seems like a weird mix, but uh, the games have been critically acclaimed in the past, and they basically see, you know, uh, a roster of Final Fantasy characters mixing with a large roster of Disney-owned characters, and... In this in in uh, this trailer, we saw the likes of Elsa from Frozen. We saw Simba from The Lion King, Wreck It Ralph. We saw Hercules, Toy Story, Monsters Inc., uh, Rapunzel from Tangled, Donald Duck, Goofy, Mickey Mouse. You know all these iconic Disney characters, and it you know just wrapped up in this kind of magical RPG. Uh, yeah, and Kingdom Hearts 3 has been long awaited and is a highly anticipated game. And now Xbox gamers are going to get to enjoy it on January 29th is going to be the release date. So look forward to that. I really highly recommend you check it out. It remains to be seen whether the first two games will be released on Xbox. I know they've been remastered and re-released on the PS4. So hopefully they'll they'll release those for the Xbox One, especially if Kingdom Hearts 3 sells well. You know, I'm sure there are many Xbox fans who would like to check the series out in its full. But yeah, great announcement there, and uh, I highly recommend you check it out. Great series of games. We then got the announcement of some Sea of Thieves expansions coming in the form of The Cursed Sails, which comes out in July, and Forsaken Jaws, which follows in September. Now, Sea of Thieves was a highly anticipated game for Xbox gamers. But unfortunately, the general consensus is it failed to live up to the hype. And, you know, it was developed by Rare, who have in the past been hailed for their great games. But it really felt like it wasn't the Rare we, we know and love. So hopefully this DLC will help mitigate some of, uh, some of the complaints of the original game, which was considered to be lacking in content. Uh, you know, kind of wide as an ocean, shallow as a puddle is uh, the phrase that was used a lot. And I feel like, to be fair, Rare has acknowledged this and is aware of this. So hopefully these two expansions will add content and bolster the games up and, you know, give players a reason to return and, more importantly, keep on playing. I feel like Sea of Thieves has so much potential to be a really fun game. And unfortunately that wasn't realised upon its initial release. But with any luck, this DLC will be, you know, worth the price of admission and make Sea of Thieves a much meatier game. You know, I don't really consider myself a fan of racing games, you know, car games. I enjoy one now and then, but they're generally not ones that interest me very much. You know, I've, I've never bought one day one or anything or got really excited about a racing game. But I have to say that I was really impressed by the reveal of Forza Horizon 4. And I've got to say, I... I, I you know, I want to play this game, and I haven't said that for a long time about a racing game. I just thought it looked really, really good. Maybe I'm a bit biased because it's set in Britain, and as you can tell by my accent, I am British. But I just thought it was really impressive. It was a really meaty announcement. We just got to see so much of it, so much gameplay, and it looked great, you know. 
there was a variety of cars and terrains you'll you'll clearly see in a minute i don't know a lot about cars you know you know lots of shiny cars they look nice don't they um you know, and there was just a great, it's going to be set in Britain, and it seems like there'll be everything from the Scottish Highlands to the coasts to the urban cities, you know, a really great mix of terrains and environments for us to race across. And a feature that I thought was really cool is dynamic seasons. So I don't know if these will correlate with our seasons in real life or whether they'll come around more often. But basically, you know, this will affect gameplay. So in summer, it'll be, you know, great for street racing and stuff. Uh, you'll be able to make turns easily and stuff. But then, you know, winter will come in and the roads will get icy and snowy. And this will affect the, you know, the map. So in summer, there'll be a lake that obviously you can't drive on. But then that lake will freeze in winter and you'll be able to race across it. So you know, the map will expand and change according to the environments. The game is going to be a shared open world, so the other cars on there will be other players, and they will all be affected by the same season. So you won't have someone, you know, racing, you know, entering a race in summer while other people are in winter or anything. It's going to be 60 frames per second on the Xbox One, great for racing games. There was a cool feature where using the D-pad you could quickly communicate with other players nice and easily, suggest races or convoys and stuff. And, you know, you could take part in uh, kind of public events which give you rewards. You can team up with other players and take those on. And you can look forward to it sooner rather than later because it's out October 2nd and will launch on Xbox Game Pass if you have that. So yeah, I think this was a really strong showing and as I say, I'm not even a car guy and I really enjoyed it. So I think this was really solid. I, I imagine Forza fans are d hyped for this and Xbox fans in general, I imagine if it's managed to peak my interest, it's probably peaked yours. Yeah, I, I might have to look into uh, getting this for my PC. But I was very impressed, and it's been a long time since I played a racing game. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to check this one out. So then Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, took the stage to welcome the new studios that have been purchased by Microsoft and will be now making games for them. So, first of all, we heard of The Initiative, a new studio based in Santa Monica. Um, again, we don't know what games all of these people are working on for them, but, you know, the fact is, I think this sends out a message to Xbox gamers that Microsoft is aware that Xbox is lacking high-quality exclusives like the PS4, and, you know, having purchasing these, these studios is a way of saying, look, there's stuff coming in the future, we've got these new studios, we're going to put them to work in a few years, they will have stuff to show us. So you've got the initiative in uh, Santa Monica, Undead Labs, who recently released uh, the mediocre State of Decay 2, Playground Games, um, and then the surprise one, Ninja Theory, who released Hellblade last year, Senua's Sacrifice, which was an excellent game. I was surprised to see Microsoft has purchased them, but you know they're a fantastic studio, and hopefully they keep making games that are as high quality as Hellblade. And then last but not least, Compulsion Games, who are making We Happy Few, which is heading to the Xbox late, uh, next year, I believe it was. Um, either late this year or next year. And so, yeah, you know, as I say, there wasn't a huge announcement for many of these studios, but it, it's a message to fans saying, we hear you, we know you want high quality exclusive games. We, we have got the studios to do that and so you know look forward to seeing what they bring you and I'm very interested personally to see what Ninja Theory releases following Hellblade. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds or PUBG is one of the biggest games around at the moment and has really breathed life into the Battle Royale genre and the only place console players can play the game at the moment is on Xbox One's early access system so that's all the rage it's buggy as hell to be fair at the moment but you know it certainly has a large audience and we got to see a new trailer at the conference which announced a new mode called war mode which appears to be even bigger and more insane than 
the standard mode available at the moment. We saw that there are new maps coming and this is all coming as part of an update which will be released this winter in 2018. So no doubt people addicted to uh, PUBG at the moment will be looking forward to that. We then got to have an extended look at The Division 2. Now this was officially announced uh, back in March I believe. Uh, but we haven't seen many details of it. We certainly haven't seen any gameplay or anything. But we got a really good look at it during Microsoft's conference. So we saw an in-game demo, and you know it certainly looks like um, like it expands upon the original game, which kind of had a lot of hype behind it, but didn't quite live up to it upon its release. Although to be fair to to the developer, did they did stick with it, and uh, I believe it is a pretty decent game nowadays. So hopefully they've learnt their lesson from the release of the first division and this one will be as good as it claims to be upon its release. So beta sign up for it is live now if you're interested. You can go and sign up for the beta and play it early ahead of everyone else. I thought it looked really good graphically. It was really impressive. We had the kind of uh, cringy conversations between the players. You know, said like, can't for me, watch my six. Like no one talks like that in real life. But, you know, it, it did look like a lot of fun to play with your mates. I feel like there was really an emphasis on tactical gameplay, you know, outflanking opponents, outmaneuvering them, you know, to get the advantage in battle. And, yeah, I mean, it looked really promising. Uh, I was never a big fan of the original Division. But I've got to say, if Ubisoft has learned their lesson from the first game, then I think we could expect good things from this. And no doubt we'll see more of it during Ubisoft's conference soon. For those of you who are interested in the game, it's going to be released next year on March 15th. And then next up, we got to see some of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is the third instalment to the Tomb Raider reboot. And again, this looks like another great Tomb Raider game. You know, the series was kind of uh, in dire straits for a bit there. But then the reboot in 2013 completely uh, breathed new life into Lara and... I personally really enjoyed the recent Tomb Raider games and Shadow of the Tomb Raider looks like it's going to be no exception. We got to see a trailer which featured lots of gameplay. The game looks absolutely incredible as the previous ones have. Um, obviously it's going to be Xbox One X compatible so you know if, you, if you're into your Xbox One X then you'll be able to enjoy the enhanced gameplay there. Set to be released on September 14th. And yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if this is going to, the third game going to be the, the closing of this um, Tomb Raider reboot? Will this be the end of the trilogy or will this just be the end of uh, the story regarding the Trinity organization? You know, maybe the fourth game will be like Uncharted 4 or something. Who knows? But yeah, again, this was shown for Microsoft, but it's coming out for PC and PS4 as well. And I mean, it just looks like another really solid action adventure game and one that you know fans of Uncharted and the like should definitely watch out for so um, yeah it's looking great. I really like skateboarding and when I was younger I used to try and skateboard you know in real life but the truth is I was terrible at it. I'm too afraid of pain and I, I just don't have the balls to try new tricks and you know go down massive ramps and stuff. So as you can imagine, I do enjoy a good skateboarding game. I loved the Tony Hawk games back in the day. I loved the skate games. But unfortunately, we haven't had a great skateboarding game in years. We haven't had a, a skateboarding game in years. Everyone's been on EA, including myself, saying they should make Skate 4. But the fact is, do we even want a Skate 4 from EA nowadays? They're such a piece of shit. But it looks like Microsoft has seen the gap in the market and is embracing it. You know, you snooze, you lose EA. And it has um, it shown a trailer for Session, which is an upcoming skateboarding game. It was kind of uh, it was announced a while ago. It kind of uh, like indie title, but it looks like Microsoft has taken it under its wing. It's going to be exclusive to Microsoft, you know, Xbox and PC. So it's not coming out on PS4, which is unfortunate for me. So I'll have to get this up on my PC. But yeah, I mean, I think if they pull this off, if they make it as in, in innovative and intuitive as uh, Skate was, the way you just, you know, flick the controller and you, you pull off tricks, it really feels dynamic. If they manage to nail a system of skating akin to that, then I think this could be excellent and would be a great way of attracting, you know, people into skateboarding to the Xbox because it's how they could get their fix at home. So, you know, I... I 
fair play to Microsoft. They they saw a gap in the market and they've seized it. And the game trailer, it looked good. I really like the sound of the board, you know, as it flips up and stuff. The wheels hitting the floor. And I really hope this, you know, lives up to expectations and manages to fill the hole that Skate left. Devil May Cry fans will have been thrilled to see the announcement of Devil May Cry 5, a brand new Devil May Cry game and, uh, you know, direct sequel from 4. So we got to see a really intense action gameplay trailer, you know, like all the classic Devil May Cry, hack and slashing, fighting demons, you know, fighting 100 enemies at once. It was all there, the classic gameplay. It seems Dante now, uh, he has a kind of mech arm. Mech arms are so so in at the moment, aren't they? And he can use that in combat as well as to help him traverse his environment. And, I mean, it just looks really solid, really good. I, I don't think Devil May Cry fans could ask for more, to be honest. I, I don't think it's exclusive to Microsoft, um, but obviously it will probably have Xbox One X enhancements. And you could expect to get your hands on it in spring 2019. So Cuphead was one of my favourite games of last year, and you should check out the video I made of it, if you haven't already. And, you know, it, it's just great to see that there's going to be an expansion to that. I really hope it's as high quality as the uh, initial game. It seems there's going to be a new island of bosses to explore. There's a new character, Miss Chalice, who, you know, I assume will have her own abilities. And it's set to be released in spring 2019. So uh, a bit of a wait from the release of the initial game, but to be honest, if it's as high quality as the, the main game, then I'm happy to wait. And you know, the animation, the cartoon style, I know it takes such a long time to do, so I'm happy to give them all the time they need for that. And um, it's called the, the Delicious Last Course DLC, and you know, I just hope the bosses are as tight and as inventive and as fun to play against as the bosses were in the main game. And as a big Cuphead hat fan, I'm really looking forward to this one. Next up, we have an adorable looking game called Tunic, which appears to be kind of Zelda meets furries with a splash of Dark Souls, perhaps, to it. The The trailer was gorgeous. The The gameplay, it, it just the graphics, they're a simplistic kind of style, but just so vibrant and beautiful to look at. And it's made by one developer from Nova Scotia, and I, I'm so glad that Microsoft has got behind it and is giving it such a massive audience because it looks like such a charming game. And you know, you play as this small fox who adventures this big open world with uh, bosses around and spooky ruins, and it just looks like a really, I keep saying the word charming, kind of action adventure game. And it's the kind of thing I'd love to just sit down and play relax you know it's not too intense it, it doesn't look like overwhelmingly bleak or anything just a really nice simple beautiful game and i you know i say simple in the best way possible i i think it's just got a lot of appeal and i really look forward to seeing more of this one the award for most adrenaline fueled game would surely go to jump force now i'm not a huge anime guy so i don't know a great deal about the the details of all this but this is basically a new fighting game from Namco Bandai and it, it's like just a mashup of uh, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, Death Note and One Piece and it's just like an all-star brawler uh, and you'll just be able to duke it out as your favourite anime characters and I mean it looks insane like just completely over the top but so much fun and I'm sure, you know, for anime fans, this is a huge deal. And I'm sure there will be plenty of people going online to see their favourite characters smash the shit out of other people's favourite characters. So, uh, yeah, anime fans, this is definitely one you need to pick up. Another game that personally was a highlight for me at Microsoft Conference was the reveal of Dying Light 2. Now, I didn't get to play a lot of the original Dying Light. I did play some of it, but I really liked it. And to be honest, Dying Light 2 just seems bigger and better in every single way. So it's an open world map filled with zombies and you could do parkour. But at night the zombies get really powerful and you have to hide away or, you know, face the zombie horde. Now we got to see a lengthy gameplay demo of it. And a feature they, they seem really eager to press upon us is choice, player choice. Choices you make throughout the game that will affect the world around you 
and the, they were saying that there's this functioning ecosystem in the world that will react to the choices you make whether you help one select group of survivors versus another if you give water out for everyone or keep it for yourself you know these choices will shape the the world around you the way characters interact with you which you know hopefully should make it a really replayable game you know so you could go through and make different choices compared to the ones you did um, the first time around and with these choices you know there's a number of ways to complete missions the example they gave is you've got to get water from a water tower there's some guys there you could kill them and that would shape the game in one way or you could team up with them make peace with them and that would shape the game another way and both would have different consequences and you know i love meaningful choices in games i love the witch 3 for that and it seems like Dark Light are really, really going out of his way to make that a key feature of the game. And if they pull it off, I think that could really add a lot of nuance to, you know, uh, this zombie game. Of course, parkour is back. There's more you can do than ever. There's plenty of that. Still able to traverse the world via the rooftops. The kind of make your own weapons are clearly still there. He had like a strange looking machete made out of scrap metal. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll see more of this soon, but... I thought it looked really strong, a really strong trailer and demo for it, and I look forward to this one. Another announcement I certainly didn't see coming is Battletoads, uh, a reboot of the Battletoads franchise, if you can call it that. This has long been a kind of practical joke online of people pre-ordering Battletoads from GameStop and the like when it doesn't really exist. But, you know, it seems like uh, Microsoft has heard that people, you know, still have a kind of fondness for Battletoads and it looks like we're getting a new game. And not a lot was released other than that short trailer, but it will be three player couch co-op, 2.5D graphics, and we can expect to play it in 2019. So, uh, finally, finally, Battletoads is making its triumphant return. Just prior to E3 launching, there was a leak about Just Cause 4. A screenshot was seen on Steam advertising the game to pre-order, so it was expected to turn up at some point during E3, and we got it during Microsoft's conference. I've really enjoyed the past Just for, uh, Just Cause game, sorry. You know, they're, they're mindless action fun. They're like a good action blockbuster. You know, they're not deep, they're not clever, but they are a lot of fun, and it's great to see loads of things just exploding on screen at once. So we got to see a, a gameplay trailer. The the games have always looked good, and this one's no exception. It looks gorgeous. The the games are known for their destructible environments, and it's really been notched up to 11 with this one. I mean, buildings collapsing, you know, cars and planes and vehicles being destroyed in a realistic way. You, you know, it looks like it'll be really dynamic. You know, if you blow something up, the world around will react to the explosion. We can expect to see the game pretty soon on December 4th and it looks like there's going to be some kind of like weather elements in the game. We saw a big tornado like going through so no doubt that will combine with the gameplay, the wingsuit, you'll be able to like use that to fly around. So yeah, you know, not big, not clever, but a really fun action game and I look forward to checking it out. So then Microsoft turned its attention to its one of its biggest franchises, Gears of War, very popular franchise, one I really enjoyed back in the 360 era. So first of all, they made the announcement of two smaller games, uh, two mobile games, I believe. First of all was Gears of War Funko Pop, which I thought was really cute. I know Gears of War is known for a more mature tone, but I, I quite like the idea of a Gears of War Funko Pop game. And... I, I kind of wonder if maybe Funko Pop is hoping to eventually get, like, a to release a full Funko Pop video game, kind of like the Lego games. Do you know what I mean? Like, so instead of, like, Lego Star Wars, you'll have a full-fledged, you know, Funko Pop Gears of War game or something, you know? And I wonder if releasing a mobile game first is them kind of testing out the waters. I'd be up for that. I've got a few Funko Pop figures, and I, I'd definitely be interested in a... Funko Pop game, you know, Lego has to play it safe, they're a bit more family friendly, whereas Funko Pop, you know, is kid friendly, sure, but they can afford to also uh, have more adult content, you know what I mean, you never see kind of Lego soldiers or anything, whereas Funko Pop, they'll they'll pretty much embrace any part of pop culture, so I, I'd be interested in, in seeing a, a proper Gears of War Funko Pop game, I think that's an interesting direction for them to go in. 
and I look forward to it, to be honest. And then another mobile game called Gears Tactics was announced. And again, this one I thought looked really promising. It's kind of XCOM, but Gears of War, you know, a turn-based strategy tactical game where you know kind of like XCOM a bit like Mario Kingdom Rabbids if you remember that it, it, you know where you, it won't be real time action it is turn based you kind of like a game of chess but obviously it'll be Gears of War and you'll be fighting the Locusts I believe they said it's set before the events of Gears of War 1 so yeah I mean I think that's a really cool direction to go in I, I seem to recall, I might be making this up, but I seem to recall there was a cancelled Gears War game that was going to be similar, but it was going to be, I think, maybe like Halo Wars, uh, more of an RTS. But, you know, I'm totally interested in this, and I look forward to seeing how it runs, and, you know, I really hope they put time and effort to make this a worthwhile mobile game, and, yeah, I mean, I'd be up for a full console release of a, a tactical Gears War game. I think the Gears War world has a lot to offer, and yeah, I I think they should definitely explore other other genres to take Gears of War down. And then last but certainly not least, Gears of War 5 was announced. We saw a trailer and then an extensive gameplay demo. I was struck by, it seems like they're really pushing the story in this game. Now, I was a big fan of the original three Gears games. And don't get me wrong, they had a decent enough story, but they were more, you know, the action and uh, the multiplayer over the story but it, it really feels like they're they're pushing story with this new series i haven't played gears 4 i know i, I should get onto that but yeah i i'm all for that to be honest because i feel like gears i really like its lore and its location and stuff and i i like the idea of you know them making the new characters as lovable to gamers as the original Delta Squad was. So th that certainly seems great. I'm intrigued to see where it goes. I thought there was really diverse locations. It all seemed very fresh. Do you know what I mean? You weren't just underground for the whole game or, you know, it wasn't it wasn't too dark. I felt like there was light and lushness to it, even though plenty of danger still as well. It looks like there's new weapons that we're going to be waging war with, including some really cool looking melee weapons. There was one that kind of reminded me of Kratos's uh, Chains of Olympus. Uh, so yeah, and I'm sure, obviously as well, Gears 5 will have a robust multiplayer because, you know, the series is really known for that. And I'm sure whole Horde mode will return, which is something I spent countless hours on. So yeah, definitely big news for Gears fans, big news for Microsoft fans. And this is definitely a big game on the horizon to look out for. It seemed like that was the end of Microsoft's conference and Phil Spencer came out to, you know, give us an outro and talking about the future of Xbox and how there's so much great stuff to come. Did anyone else notice he kind of touched on the next generation of Xbox? You know, he kind of said, you know, when it comes, the next Xbox will be cutting edge and will be great and everything you'll want from it. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I mean, there have been rumours lately that this generation is uh, not yet, but beginning to beginning to see its twilight, and there have been rumours about the PS5 and stuff, and you know, I think this is a sign of that. I don't think we need to worry about buying a new Xbox or PS4 in the next year or two, but you know, the, we're past the halfway point for certain with the current generation, and you know, I'm sure Microsoft and Sony as well are, are both looking to what they want their next consoles to be like. So I thought that was interesting little uh, tidbit he touched on there. And then, just as it seemed like Phil was closing down the conference in just the most epic way possible, it seemed like there was some kind of mistake, like a, a corruption of the screens and stuff, which actually turned out to be the first full trailer for CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077. And I thought it was just so cool. It like gave me chills the way the way everything went to a blank and like code started coming up on all our screens. You know, it was so cool. And then the username was red. I was like, oh shit. And you know, this is such an anticipated game. CD Projekt Red have shot to fame with uh, The Witcher 3, considered one of the best RPGs, one of the best games ever made. So there are incredibly high hopes for Cyberpunk, and I really, really hope they're able to deliver on it. We we saw a trailer with game engine footage. I loved how Blade Runner esque the the world was. I'm a big fan of the Blade Runner films, 
we haven't had a cyberpunk game, a decent one in, oh, I can't even remember the last one. So this is really going to scratch that itch. We had this big open city, vehicles we could travel on. I mean, it was more kind of setting the game's tone rather than showing us real gameplay, I think. But even so, it looked fantastic. And as I say, I mean, this is going to be one of the most anticipated games on the horizon. We don't have a release window yet, not even 2019. Could be 2020, possibly. But, you know, clearly, I mean, everyone was blown away by this. And I just cannot wait to see this game actually in action. So that wraps it up for Microsoft's E3 conference and I thought it was a really strong one. I just loved how it was just an hour and a half of game after game after game. You know, a lot of people are saying it's do or die for Microsoft this year given that they they just haven't had the, the exclusive titles out recently and the PS4 has just been outpacing the Xbox One at every turn. But, you, you know, I and it could easily have been a washout this year if they hadn't brought out the big guns then I think the Xbox would have been done for at least for this generation but yeah I thought they came out really strong just so many games uh, a lot of the games were third party but I still think there was a healthy mix of uh, third party games with uh, Xbox exclusive games or Microsoft exclusive games I should say as far as I understand the Microsoft exclusive games were Halo Infinite, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Crackdown 3, uh, the Sea of Thieves expansion, Forza Horizon 4, We Happy Few, PUBG, Session, Battletoads, Gears of War Pop Game, Gears of War Tactics and Gears of War 5. And then all the rest were games that will be available on PS4 and PC. So, you know, I still think that's a, a healthy list. Plenty for Xbox owners to look forward to. I also think the fact that they, they made a point in showing the studios that Microsoft has acquired you know again is saying look we've got stuff in the pipeline that we can't show yet but is coming so yeah I thought it was very strong and you know if I was an Xbox guy I think I'd be pretty pleased by all that and you know just as a gamer I'm pleased by it my my only uh criticism if you like the only thing I was slightly disappointed at that is no mention of Fable um it, it kind of has been sort of unofficially said that a new Fable game is in the works and I, I'm a big fan of Fable series. I know Fable 3 and kind of the games that followed weren't so good. But Fable 1 and 2 I absolutely adored. And Fable 2 especially when I first got my Xbox 360. I, I got all the achievements for that. I 100%ed it. I loved that game. So I have a soft spot in my heart for Fable. And, you know, I, I was hoping we might see a teaser for it. But I guess not. But, you know, that doesn't mean it's not coming. And we might not hear you know, a fable maybe at Gamescom or something later in the year, and if not next year, you know, but it's in the pipeline, so it's it's not really a great tragedy that it wasn't shown, but it would have been nice. But yeah, overall, I thought very strong, and I really hope this is the beginning of Microsoft, you know, getting its shit together, because as I say, I, I'm not a huge Xbox guy or anything, but I am a gamer, and I truly believe that competition in video games in the video game industry is healthy and good for the consumer you know it's good to keep these companies on their toes and i i don't like the idea of sony getting complacent or feeling like they have room to you know take advantage of their customers because xbox is falling behind you know so uh, yeah i hope this is a, a fresh start for xbox and you know this is the beginning of a new era full of games full of xbox one sales and yeah, I thought they did a, a great job. So let's see what uh, the rest brings. Let's see what Sony brings. And I'll be sure to cover that.